guys and welcome back to my channel it's like my first time filming since being a mom and i'm like almost five months in so there's that <laughs> um but i'm so excited to be filming this video today i am convincing myself that it is like 40 degrees outside when it's really like 100 so here i am in a crew neck but i thought we could have like little bit of cozy vibe for this chat because um it's a little bit of a heavy one but it's one that i really like feel like i want to talk to you guys about and something that i recently walked through and processed through and didn't really expect all at the same time so we're gonna make a cup of tea pretend it's fall and get into this little chat i think i'm gonna make this tea i don't know if you guys have ever had this but it is so good vanilla bean macaroon it's like a decaf tea okay guys so we have our tea and i have my notebook full of the things that i just wanted to chat with you guys about um things i experienced in really like the first two weeks after birth um that i just really didn't expect to experience courage is definitely wait for this video <laughs> uh which i feel like is fitting because that's just like my life right now so there might be several pauses but we're gonna get through it we're gonna chat i want this to just be a casual just like chat about what my experience was and hopefully this can be just encouraging to you if you're in that season or about to be in that season and help you realize some of the things that um, you can expect that can be normal in the first two weeks. So let's get into it. I'm gonna help her really quick. Okay, so when it comes to the first two weeks of postpartum, there was just so many things that I did not expect and like no one told me would be normal and then when it was happening and i was like talking to my mom about it every day she's like yep totally normal like you should be feeling all these things it will pass and i was like what like i just did not expect to have all these emotions you're so excited about this new life that you've brought in which like as you should be it's so exciting and so beautiful and you're just getting to know your baby which is so special but at the same time, it can be really, really challenging because you're getting to know each other, you're getting to know their needs, you're entering into this whole new life of motherhood that is just this whole new realm of just selflessness. It's beautiful, but it's so hard at the same time. And I honestly think for me, it was a little bit of a rude awakening of like, oh, this is what it means to be a mom. And this is coming from someone who worked with kids, like had tons of experience with kids. Nothing can compare and nothing can prepare you. It's beautiful, but it is really, really challenging in those first like two weeks. When I first got home from the hospital, obviously I was still recovering. I was pretty sore, but also it wasn't as bad as I was expecting, so that was nice. Um, I was fully breastfeeding, so that was a whole experience that I needed to learn and was trying to figure out. And I will say that that was a huge contributor, contributor to the baby blues for me. I don't think I had postpartum depression necessarily. Um, like I said, I experienced most of this in the first two weeks. And after that, I feel like my brain started to clear a little bit more. Um, I know that's not everyone's experience, but... Um, I think in that moment I was kind of like am I going to experience postpartum depression this is what it feels like my emotions are crazy and so um, I didn't expect that and I also like didn't really know what the baby blues were and the emotions that came with it so as I was saying breastfeeding I believe was a big contributor to my baby blues because courage my daughter was struggling to latch she was struggling to figure everything out and i also being a new mom didn't know what i was doing so I, there was a huge concern about 
is she getting enough milk and I'm having trouble with every feeding to get her to feed right and latch right and she would feed on one side and not the other it was just a whole thing the first thing I would say is if you're breastfeeding and you're on the struggle bus it's totally normal you guys are figuring each other out and you will get into a routine of breastfeeding you'll get used to it your baby will get used to it um and really like i wish i could just go back and tell myself it's gonna be okay like she's okay she's eating fine you will know if she's not and that was one of the things that my mom kept telling me she was like if she's hungry she is going to let you know and there will be no question about it and so that was something that really got me over that hurdle i would just tell myself okay if she may not have had the best feeding but if she's hungry i will know when i first got home i had a lot of help i didn't really know what I would want. I didn't know if I'd want people to be at my house or not. I'm typically a people person um, and so I kind of was expecting that I would want people around and that was definitely true for me. It was so helpful to have my mom in the house and she was taking care of the dishes. She was doing the laundry. Every time Courage would spit up or have dirty clothes, she was taking it and cleaning it and keeping my house organized. And all I had to do was focus on her. And that was the biggest blessing ever. Moms are literally amazing and so helpful and so I think I set that expectation before like hey these are the things I think I'm going to need help in and those were the areas that I got help in and it was just such a blessing to us. And then my mom had to go back to Georgia. We live in Tennessee and that was really <laughs> when things set in for me. It was exciting but also a little bit terrifying thinking about how am I going to take on all of these household duties and look after her. It seemed impossible at the time and I just told Andrew, I'm going to need your help in these areas. I'm going to need help unloading the dishwasher and putting some laundry in and getting all those things done. And so I think the biggest thing for us during that time was clear communication. But with Andrew's parents leaving and my mom leaving, um, I definitely spiraled emotionally and this is when I needed like 24 7 comfort i can't tell you the amount of times that i would um walk into andrew's studio or walk into the room andrew was in and i would just hug him and start crying juno decided to come join the video <laughs> honestly i could not tell him why i was crying it was just such an overwhelming feeling i remember thinking like am i going to be okay and <laughs> Andrew did everything that he could to just comfort me and reassure me that like my emotions were really heightened and most of the time it would be around like breastfeeding or the lack of sleep that I was getting and Andrew would just kind of like take control of the situation, take courage from me, um, encourage me that you know from his perspective she was fine, I could get some rest, like everything was gonna be okay and I just needed him to tell me that in the moment. I just needed him to tell me it was gonna be okay and I just believed him. <laughs> so if you experience that in your first two weeks, just know that it is totally normal to feel those feelings. It's totally normal to cry multiple times a day and not know why you're crying and it doesn't mean that you are doing anything wrong you are experiencing something incredibly challenging for the very first time and it is so normal to have those feelings and i wish i would have known that that was normal and that i was going to feel those feelings of sadness and just not really knowing where it was coming from i called my mom pretty much like 20 times a day it felt like just crying and be like I can't figure this out I don't know what to do like am I gonna feel like this forever and she was just like nope you're not gonna feel like this forever just give it a few weeks you've got to get into this routine of life with your baby now and 
you've got to get to know her like really she's a stranger to you she's your daughter but at this point you don't know her and your love is growing for her and you're you're just learning what it is to be a mom another thing that I did not expect to feel and had a lot of guilt around was the morning that I felt for my life before having my baby. It's even hard to say out loud now because you love your baby so, so much. Like you obviously wouldn't actually want to go back to your life before your baby, but there's this feeling that can come over you or at least came over me where I felt like overwhelmed by the fact that I now had this life that I was responsible for for the rest of my life. And it really just hit me after she was here. It wasn't something that I processed before. like, And I don't even know if I could have processed that feeling before having her. Um, but I really had a sense of mourning of just like, my life, my routine, the things that I could do before having her, all just being taken away from me so, so suddenly. It was hard because, like I said, I loved her so much, so I felt bad for even feeling those feelings. Now that I've like heard testimonies from other moms and even talking to my mom, she just affirmed to me that again it's totally normal and it doesn't mean that you don't love your baby enough and it doesn't mean that you're not a good mom it doesn't mean that those feelings are gonna last forever it definitely did not last forever like i said your your emotions are crazy and you're just going through the biggest adjustment that you have ever gone through in your life and being a mom is really the most selfless thing that you will ever take on so of course it's going to be a huge adjustment with that being said one thing that really helped me with this was picking one thing that I could do before having courage and allowing myself to do that. For me, that was getting out of the house at least once a day, even if it was just for 10 or 15 minutes. Our saving grace was we had this cute little coffee shop by our house and I would just tell Andrew, I really need to just get out of the house for a second so he would help me load her up. We would run to this coffee shop, sit outside, get some fresh air, literally for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then come back home. And I cannot explain to you the mental just like joy that that gave me and the mental just like clarity that that gave me. It just reset me for the rest of my day and just kind of like affirmed me that okay i still can do some things and it's just gonna take some time but um i'm bringing her into my life and it's gonna be a slow process of doing that but this is a little thing that i can have control over and take her to do with me i would just encourage you find something that you can do go on a walk go do skincare or take a shower find what helps you reset your mind as a mom at the end of the day your baby just needs a healthy mom with a healthy mind and someone with the capacity to just give them the love that they need and you can't do that if you're not taking care of yourself so find something to take care of yourself another thing that i was not prepared for is how alone i would feel at night <laughs> so my experience i fully was breastfeeding courage and I was unable to pump because of my supply. I had a really big oversupply and it was just really complicated pumping and trying to feed her and it was making my letdown too much. Long story short, I decided, okay, I'm just going to fully feed her and figure this breastfeeding thing out. So. I was up for all the nighttime feedings, feeding her and changing the diapers. And I think I had to really rewire my brain because before having her, Andrew and I were like, okay, we're doing the nights together. This is how it's gonna go down. I'm gonna feed her, you're gonna change your diaper. And then we're, you know, you're gonna put her back down to sleep and I'm gonna go to sleep. And maybe that works for some people. And if it does, that's amazing. But for us, it just didn't really work like that. Andrew went back to work way sooner than I did. And also, there was really nothing he could do at night. I was feeding her and it felt pointless to 
wake him up in the night to change her diaper when I could just change it really quickly and get her back to sleep super quickly. So it was really easy to feel alone as nighttime approached because it's a very odd feeling to know that nighttime is coming but you're not going to sleep through the night and everyone else that you know will. I have no idea how to explain that other than how I just said it. It's just a really weird feeling. And luckily, again, my mom, shout out to my mom. She has just been a huge blessing in this season. But my mom told, warned me about this. This is the one thing that I was expecting before I had her. She said, you will get this feeling at night and I don't know how to explain it to you other than saying it's like a homesick feeling, like a longing feeling to be comforted and you, you just feel a little bit homesick as nighttime approaches and I definitely felt that so much and the one thing that really really helped me was in the middle of the night number one I would allow myself to have one snack <laughs> so for me it was like those little like Nutrigrain bars and it was like something to look forward to like 3 a.m. oh I'm awake but I'm gonna eat that Nutrigrain bar the second thing that helped me was reading the word in the middle of the night I know it seems like it can be like hard to read in the middle of the night but really for me it was so comforting to know that like no one else was awake and no one else was really with me, but I could read the word, I could talk to God, and he was with me, and he saw everything that I was doing, and everything that I was feeling, and that was just something that really, really helped me get through the nights where, you know, she's feeding every two hours. Yeah, that was something that I just really leaned into during that time. The third thing that helped was giving courage to Andrew in the mornings. So say like 6 a.m. would roll around and I would be like, okay, now is a reasonable time for Andrew to get up. And um, most mornings he would kind of like take over for like those two hours and just let me sleep and he would take courage into the living room, get up with her, play with her, and then bring her back in to eat when it was time to eat. And that would help me so much with getting up for the day. I felt like I got a little bit of time to just like not hear every noise she made um, and just get some actual like good rest. Okay, if it looks a little bit different, my camera died, but that's okay because we're wrapping up anyways. I think that is basically everything that I experienced in the first two weeks after having our baby girl. So I hope this makes you feel comforted. I hope this reaches you on whatever level you're at, whether you're pregnant and waiting for your baby to come or you're sitting in postpartum right now. I hope you know that you're not alone and you're doing amazing and you will make it past this. It's so fun once you get to know your baby more and get to see their little personality come to life and you learn how to work together with your partner, whoever's helping you. I'm so excited to be back on my channel and just sharing with you guys my life because it's so different now and definitely figuring out what that looks like for YouTube. So I'm really excited for the future.